How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. It is a beautiful day here in Key West. Light-ish winds, probably about 15 out of the east. Um, I've got my friend Clayton with me, you know him, and Ashton's up front. They're down visiting from Texas and they're staying with us for the week, so we're gonna head out and do a little bit of goofing off. We've got some spear guns and some reels with us. Um, kind of like I do fairly regularly. We don't really have much of an agenda today other than hopefully find some fish to eat. So I figured I would bring you guys along with us. This is our first spot. Uh, we're gonna try and fish it first, but that's what I'm looking for is this big, thick, you can see there's little bait and stuff like that, but that big, thick line right there. That is the bottom, and then that thick piece above it is actually fish. So we're gonna get anchored up and drop a few lines in the water. Cut, but it's a little bit frayed. Looks like missed the shock. So Clayton's got a lot of bait down. Um, nothing's actually eaten that yet. Normally a, a pinfish will be the first thing to get eaten, but I'm just drifting little bonita chunks uh, on a jig head. Literally just pitching it in. There's not a whole lot of current, so this is um, sinking fairly slow, but not too fast. You want just kind of a slow, natural drift. yellow tails the big fish I hooked got eaten by a shark Clayton's live bait has not even been touched you can see how much life is on the bottom so I'm gonna put my dive gear on and go investigate let's go take a peek underwater everybody I do appreciate you joining me 
as always I'm gonna share some thoughts on some of these dives had a couple of interesting situations pop up so there should be some stuff to talk about so like I said we fished this spot about 30 minutes um, one good fish got sharked a couple short yellow tails just real realistically nothing was really biting um, so this is my very first drop uh, if you pay close attention you'll be able to count the amount of black groupers there's probably seven or eight black groupers nice mutton there I think there was probably five or six lemon sharks a nurse shark and a small bull so I'm just kind of scanning see if there's any groupers that are gonna stay comfy that's actually a Goliath if you're seeing that big one pretty much everybody's scattered except for this one so I'm kind of swoop in nice and mellow wait till it gives me that broadside shot and it does uh, you can see there's sharks around uh, depending on the situation a lot of times the fish commotion is going to startle the shark first if they're close enough to you if they're far away the commotion tends to draw them in you can see if you watch that clip back the lemon shark closest to us took off after I shot and there was a bull shark small bull shark that came in to investigate afterwards so if that makes sense so first drop one nice black no complaints brain and bleed as always water was actually really nice and clear this day it's been probably two or three weeks before there's any been even any reasonable visibility the water on the reef has been really really dirty so it was really nice to get out and see some clean water one of you asked to see this a little more in depth so I left this clip raw um, try to get up under those gills the heart is right there in that throat area so try to get all the way up under those gills to make sure they're bleeding properly even though the fish is brained the heart will continue to pump I've said that before but so this is my second drop see after the first drop I just shot a fish brain bled and gutted a grouper and you can see now there's no sharks I know a lot of times you guys ask me about does braining and bleeding bring sharks in quite honestly the sharks were there before I even got to the bottom I brain and blood a fish and there's there were there were none around when I did my second drop so nice nice mangrove here I don't think I'll ever get tired of those a big Goliath you can see off in the distance those are prohibited here if you're not familiar and this is why they call a snapper a snapper. This thing grabbed a hold of my arm pretty good. They got some pretty serious teeth. And on that dive, I just, you know, there were sharks the first dive, but I try to get that fish to me as quickly as possible. If you're not comfortable doing that, I don't recommend it. If you're not comfortable doing it, you shouldn't be spearfishing around sharks in general, but um, my method is shoot the fish. Obviously, if the sharks are being uncomfortably aggressive, I don't even bother, but the sharks I did see were just kind of hanging out cruising around and I was able to get that fish up so we fished for about 30 minutes caught two small yellow tails something got eaten by a shark no other bites I dropped there's probably 600 mangrove snappers down there I saw a mutton a dog snapper Maybe eight black groupers. I just always find it interesting that sometimes they won't eat, but that's why I bring dive gear. So I want to show you something real quick. I'm going to freeze the frame. If you look at the top of my gun where my flopper is and meets the shaft, you can see it's nice and smooth. It's a straight line there. The flopper is that little silver piece on the very end. Um, very smooth, flush with the shaft. Uh, just keep that in mind. I want to show you how subtle of a difference something can make uh, here on a clip coming up. But I know this spot to be an area where the mangrove snappers pile up during the spawning time. Um, so I was trying to find that school of spawning snapper, and this was the first dive that I actually located them. This spot's actually pretty big and can hold quite a bit of life. And you can see I have tons and tons of these spawns. This is just one of them. Um, I made a video last year on a different one where they're different fish that I don't actually spear at. It's just a different area that is pretty isolated. This one regularly trafficked. Um, I don't mind going and taking a few, just a few fish. I don't sit there and shoot all of them, obviously, but 
Um, you can see the amount of mangroves. It's just insane. And there are hundreds of these spawn locations, so you can imagine how healthy this fishery is. And schooling fish uh, can be a little overwhelming. It's, it's hard to decide and pick just one, so you try to just get one you're happy with and just try your best to focus on it. Um, and I was happy with this one. And I got a nice stone shot. And I want you to pay attention right there. If you rewind that, if you need to, I pull real hard and drag that shaft across a rock. And I didn't realize it, but you'll see on the next clip, I had actually just barely tweaked the flopper. Uh, the flopper is, if you're not familiar, it's that silver piece that hangs down. It make, prevents the fish from coming back off the shaft when you shoot something. I had just barely tweaked the, sh the flopper just enough um, to put a, just a hair of a bend in it. And um, I'll explain more on the next clip, but I want you to pay attention to how much this affected my next shot and I hate to sound like I'm sitting here making excuses but if anything it can be a lesson obviously for me um, but maybe for somebody else now I'm gonna freeze this frame as well now remember how flush that flopper was on the last dive now look at look at the bottom of my flopper right here you can see how bent it is uh, so dragging it across that rock I actually bent it out maybe at a 45 maybe not even a half inch section quarter inch section um, but you'll see the result of this dive. And in no way do I mean to sound arrogant by any means, but it's not often um, I take a shot I'm uncomfortable with that causes me to miss a fish or even tear out of a fish. Um, I've just spent a lot of time in the water, so I'm very patient. I try to make the most of every shot. I, I really hate injuring fish. So I'm just very, I'll say, tedious with my shot placement. So I do a drop here, just kind of scanning around. This is some really great bottom, nice and thick, chunky, lots of holes. It's a nice grouper here. So I come in, line up, and that shaft sails way over that fish. Um, and again, uncharacteristic of me, I don't take a lot of shots I'm not 100% confident in. Uh, and that little f tick on that flopper, you can see me looking at the shaft because I'm like wondering if it's bent or something. That little teeny tiny tick on that flopper threw that shot shot off about five to six inches because I was aiming pretty much center mass on the, the gill plate and it sailed well over the top of the fish. So if any lesson you learn here, pay attention to that flopper. If you drag it across the rocks like that, it really, uh, I don't know that I've ever had that happen. And before anyone says anything, I know someone's probably going to leave a comment. Um, I know black grouper is one per person. I have a South Atlantic uh, commercial license. I can harvest more than the, the recreational quantity. That's why I shot at another grouper. And I'm really glad I didn't take a shot on this because I hadn't yet realized that my flopper was bent. See, there's a really nice black grouper here. I'm following him, kind of on his way out, cruising. Typically, if they're on their way out like this, they're not going to stop a whole lot. I did my best to try and get low and creep up behind him. You can see this is a healthy fish. This thing is meaty. And I actually don't even see the one to the left of it until it moves because I was so zoned in. And uh, just didn't give me the shot I wanted. You know, that's a 25-pound black grouper. I think is maybe even bigger than that, but didn't give me the shot I wanted so I didn't take it and I'm glad I didn't because I probably would have missed anyways so now I know it's down there and I know where it's at so I'm gonna try and move the boat over just a little bit and try and get all over on top of those mangroves and um, see if we can get them to eat a couple baits on the rods it's just amazing we fished literally for 30 minutes had two small yellowtails and I think one bite and you can see in the video how many fish are down there it's just it's really unbelievable so that is the mark that I'm looking for so we're gonna try this again with the rods see if they will cooperate so I'm gonna start uh, an attempt with a uh, live pinfish just a bottom rig six feet of 30 pound fluorocarbon a little bit of lead, a little hook. I'm gonna try some small 
pinfish. Um, see if they'll eat that. If not, we'll try some cut bait. Get a bike. Doesn't feel like a big one, but it feels like a fish. Oh, look at Mr. Shark. Oh, he's cool. Look at you. So, if anything, this is why I bring dive gear because we sat there and fished. We were near them, not on top of them. I moved over 100 feet, and there's our mangroves coming up. One of the most common things that happens while you're bottom fishing is your bait swims down, gets wrapped around the rocks, you break all your gear off. So a little trick to avoid that. Um, put my hook up here on the rod and just keep my rod level. I don't know if you can see it, but Get the weight um, to the swivel to where that your leader and the, the, your main line out is the even length. Keep your rod level and then you count your amount of revolutions that it takes for the weight to get to the um, to the rod. And that is how long your leader is, which will mean your bait is just high enough up off the bottom that it won't get tangled. So I go one, two, about two and a half revolutions. And now my bait is just enough up, up off the bottom. Um, that it won't swim down there and get snagged. As you can see in the video, it's pretty rocky here. We're going to try and catch one. Just doing a small pin finish through the lips. Down we go. Other than that great travel we I didn't even have it up off the bottom yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't understand. It's they're like whacking it and they're just they must not be eating it all the way. I gotta let them eat, I guess. Alright. I learned my lesson on that one. That's the last one I'm gonna miss. Mark my word. There he is, I got him! Get him in the boat. Oh, the shark ate him! I knew it. Uh, that's, that's what I said, get him in the oh, I should have said shit. Yeah, you need to I know. Uh, me some sharks right. so I scaled down my hook just a hair um, just getting a lot of short bites that are pulling off and the ones we are hooking the sharks are eating so this doesn't work put my mask back on you got another one Ashley? Hold him off. I give up. So I decided to hop back in. Uh, if you know anything about me or my channel, I'm really big on not wasting anything. I don't like to kill anything that I don't need to kill uh, to eat. So sitting there and hooking fish that are getting eaten by sharks 
not really my thing, so I decided to hop back in with my spear gun. I know I've got a better chance of getting fish past the sharks with my spear gun than I do the rod, obviously. <clears throat> so I do my drop as normal. Lemon sharks cruising around, and you can see they're they're being super mellow. They're not charging me. They're not, you know, no erratic behavior. I see a nice grouper here, and my flopper's still bent, and I didn't realize it. So I line up what I think is going to be a stone shot, and it shoots high again, and unfortunately it tears out. And I'm going down to retrieve the line, kind of have my head in the hole, and I lean up, and you can see Mr. Shark comes in and gives me a, a tap on the face. Uh, and this is by no means a small shark, and it startled me. Luckily, I didn't expel all my air. I could have been in trouble, you know, on the bottom and 60 feet uh, if I just released all my air but luckily was able to stay calm and just grab what grab my gear and kind of get out of there do i think that shark was trying to bite me obviously not i think if it you know if that shark came in and wanted to bite me it would have i think more so that was bad timing the shark saw the fish go into the hole felt the commotion it went in to investigate i was already happening or i already happened to be there i pulled my head up and it hit me pretty much directly in the face you gotta remember my GoPro one is wide angle, so for it to be that close, it was on top of me, and uh, it's a, it's mounted about three inches above my eye line, so you could see if you rewind that clip and watch it back, it pretty much rammed me right in my nose mask kind of mouth area, um, which that was a first for me. I've been hit by a lot of sharks, normally in the legs or in like the groin area, um, but that was the first shark I've ever had kind of nudge me in the face. Check it off the list. So I had actually realized after that dive that my flopper was bent. You can look up and see it's actually flush again. I, bent, I took it on the side of the boat and flattened it out and was able to bend it back. Um, and I may catch a little slack for this. I'm by no means telling you to dive with sharks, to spearfish with sharks. Um, that shark, honestly, in my opinion, wasn't aggressive. That shark was curious. We just happened to run into each other. So I did another drop. I, I didn't feel unsafe. If I ever feel uncomfortable, I will leave a spot. Um, but I knew there's a lot of fish there. I just wanted a couple more mangroves. So I did another drop. You can see the lemons are still there. They're just cruising around. They're not acting erratic or anything like that. Scanning around. Decided to go for a mangrove this time. I felt confident with it. You can see I hit that fish right pretty much where I was aiming. I'm looking around. Nothing. They, you know, those sharks didn't even come in and look at me that time. So, again, dive, spearfish at your own risk. I'm not recommending you to do anything. I'm just explaining what I'm doing. Kind of scanning around as always and this school of mangroves actually will slide around quite a bit um, they don't sit right on one spot obviously fish have tails they swim around and you can see I come up on the edge of them and again schooling fish can be a bit overwhelming I see one that I want and typically not the shot I would normally take it was kind of on its way out but I straightened my flopper back I hit the last one exactly where I wanted and um, this one hit hit its mark right on again kind of that running away shot but it was a pretty big mangrove so I, I really wanted it and the sharks are still there they didn't charge me that's two fish uh, without any incident I know I'm repeating myself but I like to be thorough I know a lot of you guys skip through the videos so I decided that was enough here
Go some nice grovas. Had a little close call with the shark, so I think it's time to move along. So this is our next spot. It actually drops off a little. Comes from like 70 and rolls up. You see there's a bit of life there, so I'm gonna anchor up right on this edge and drop some chum and let's see if we can muster up. We moved along to another spot. This one's similar, not exactly the same. This one goes a little deeper. I think the sand is about 80. Uh, and the top of the roll is about 45. All of these spots, for the most part, I have found on accident. Just driving around, you mark bait. You know, you just gotta put your time in. Um, I know a lot of people look for secrets, like what, what do you look for? How do you find spots? I drive around. Um, if you're hitting the same spots over and over again, when you're driving from spot to spot, do a half moon instead of a straight line. You just cover more ground with your transducer. Um, so this is, again, great bottom. It's a nice button here, kind of off in the distance. I'm doing my grunting, doing my little hand thing that no one knows if that actually works. I still do it. I don't know why. Um, and you're just not buying it. Sometimes they don't turn. Some dives you don't shoot a fish. But it was still a beautiful drop. Love this bottom. This area is just... Very chunky and nice, I like it. I had actually seen a couple of, of black groupers here. Stayed way out, they just, water was, you know, water's really clear as you can tell, they just were not having it. Um, they stayed well out of range. I think I did probably 35 dives this day and shot maybe six or seven fish. A few mangroves cruising around. Just kind of wait for that shot. There's actually a nice Kubera. You saw it in the background uh, just behind the mangroves. Typically leave those for clients. I um, I've shot enough of them that I don't, you know, don't really have the desire to. And again, repeating myself, but they mean more to my clients than they would to me. It sounds maybe a little strange, but that's just how I feel about it. Got plenty of fish. We're done out here. I think I've had enough close calls today. Call it a W. We'll see you at the, see you back at the house. That is all I have on this one for y'all. I do appreciate it. Um, I didn't have time to get to a cooking segment. The week kind of got away from me and before I knew it, it's Monday and I've got to get an episode out by 6 p.m. Um, so as always, any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I will get to them. That's getting a little overwhelming, but I'm gonna try and manage it for as long as I can. Um, other than that, I think that's all I have. I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming along and I will see you on the next one. Later.